ladies and gentlemen, Farley Morris here. A pleasure. How are you, man? I'm doing very well. Excellent. I'm doing moderately well. You're doing moderately well. Moderately well. well. well let me have another little swig of uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll do better. Coffee yeah, yeah, smell yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many coffees have you had today? Coffees, Farley. I cannot tell a lie, but I also can't count. <laughs> That's right, so you won't do it. <laughs> Farley, uh, this book about your young life is called Otherwise. Mm -hmm. Why is it called Otherwise? That is for you to find out, sir. No, that's a compliment answer, sir. Reading. Really? Well, no, no it, it, there is a reason. Yeah. Uh, the reason is I couldn't think of any, any better title. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. I'll call it Otherwise until I think of a title. <laughs> that's right. And w when they get through with the book, and I'd passed it on to my editor at Colin Sterrett, she said, it's a fantastic title. And I said, well, it should be. I thought about it for a long time. And it took months and months of labor. So I was stuck with it. There you go, otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, because it is about the others in the world today, the non-human lives, the ones whom we have treated as if they are dirt under our feet, the ones whom we are destroying wholesale. Are you talking about the aliens at the front of the sewers about, or the animals? I'm talking about the animals. Yes. Well, it, uh, you know, when we are animals too, but we have become alien animals. Did you imagine when you first started writing about this, mm -hmm. did you think we would reach a point now? Like, you can't, when you go up, to, when was the last time you've been up to the north, to the Arctic? It's I don't go back anymore. For one very good reason. I cannot stand the desolation. The destruction of human lives is one thing. Mm -hmm. But the destruction of the non-human lives is so enormous, so beyond our powers of, of, of reporting anyway, that you can hardly believe it. We are destroying the North as cleanly, not as cleanly, as dirtily, but as completely as we've already destroyed most of the southern regions. And you've told that story time mm. and time again mm. of what will happen if things don't change, and now we're at, at this point. Yeah, they're changing my name, you know, they can't call me Farley anymore. No, it's Jeremiah. They call you Jeremiah? Jeremiah Mowat, right? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't you, once, didn't you register yourself in school as Billy Mowat? Yeah, but there was a reason for that. Why? Uh, my first name. My first name, Farley. Well, how would you have liked it if every day you went to school, the kids in the front row would say, look at you, yeah, yeah, yeah. hello, Fartley. <laughs> yeah. Fartley Mowat. Yeah. You know, I, as a Strombolopolis, I've never been called Fartley, so. <laughs> I, <laughs> but with a name like yours, there's no way you can, you could change it. No, you have no, to. No, yeah, there it is. It's <laughs> engraved in letters of gold. It's a bit ridiculous, yeah. my name. No, it isn't. Strombolopolis, but I'll take it. But this isn't about me. This is anyway, about that's a good thing. I hope you are slightly ridiculous, because that is the only redeeming feature in the human race. The ridiculousness? The, the ridiculousness of you it. You used to have a lot of faith in people. Do you still have that? I do. Female and a certain size and proportion. <laughs> can have his dreams, can he? Yes, you can have your dreams. <laughs> Farley, I don't want to know about your dreams. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to know <laughs> No, no, we'll skip that. But aside yeah. from the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing that you like in women, um, do, uh, I, I've heard that over time you've become, cynical's the wrong word, slightly not, pissed, not off. Cynical. pissed off. Uh, I've learned the truth about us. W which is? The truth about us is that we are a bad species. We're an unnatural animal now. I'm becoming more and more unnatural. And in so doing, we probably have doomed ourselves already. Now, I don't find this a, 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 an, an oppressive concept or conclusion. Mm -hmm. It is not pessimistic. It's optimistic. Because with our elimination, and we're going to eliminate ourselves, life will carry on. And it will be as if we never have existed upon this earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth will be green where it should be green, and blue where it should be blue. And there will be lots of life without us. So I'm an, I'm a, I'm an optimist. Some people are very comfortable getting old. I, how do you feel about as, as well, you're Well, I'm, I'm perfectly contented with it, perfectly happy about it, as long as there's no, not too much suffering. I don't like suffering. Yeah, but does? the idea of, go of going old, the idea of dying, is not at all objectionable. It's inevitable. So what the hell is the use of, of, it being, of objecting to it? But when you were a really young man, you mm. were uh, in the war. Yep. Did, did you have the same attitude about life then? You're talking about the Boer War? Yeah, I believe yeah, yeah. there's that war. That, I was thinking more of the bigger war. The bigger the war. The WW2. Right. Yeah, WW2. Yes, well, certainly I was in it. And uh, this book, by the way, doesn't deal with it. I skip over it completely because I've do already dealt with it in two yeah. other books. I said all I had to say about, about it. About that. But this was the, the time when I discovered that the whole illusion that we had built in our minds about human beings being the end product of a marvelous evolution, the most superior form of life ever to exist, the ultimate form of life, was a lot of crap. And, and the, way, the way I discovered it was by seeing, watching us destroy each other. You were a soldier in the war. Yeah, and in the infantry. So I was in the fighting, mm -hmm. you know. And I imagine that when you come home from that war, 
That would be one of the reasons to go to the north. Yes, to get I went, away from people. Exactly, exactly. Except people like you. If there had been more of you around, oh, George. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the shapely figure that you alluded to earlier, sir. And I don't have the inclinations that you're suggesting. Neither do I. <laughs> okay. But regardless, um, you uh, you used to carry a, when you were in the trenches. You yeah. would carry around a water bottle, much like your coffee full cup, full of rum. Full of rum. Yeah. And but then, th those days are over. I mean, after my third liver transplant, I decided that I'd better switch to vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Farley, because you've made it this far, I don't need, we don't need to have an intervention. You seem to be okay. But the, the, you were, that moment, you had a real personal interaction with somebody you were fighting. Uh, a German soldier? You are perhaps speaking of livers again. Yes. You're perhaps thinking about a German soldier that yeah. I encountered when I was driven in, in panic fear. In, in terror what happened? by German shelling. It was around, I was out in the open. There was a little Italian uh, hut, stone hut, collapsed, badly damaged by shell fire. But it was the only cover inside. So I scrambled towards it, threw myself inside, and found that it was already occupied by a German soldier who had been very, very badly hit. He'd been ripped open pretty well across the front. And he was lying, and he was, he was dying. It was pretty obvious that he was dying. There was nothing I could do about it. I was afraid at first that he might shoot me because, you know, he was a German, I was Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, but then realized that he was already near death. And so I just crouched down and waited for the hoping that the shelling would stop. And I could hear, then I could hear his voice through the moment the shelling was saying, Wasser, 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 water. And I thought, oh my God, you know, what can I do, what can I do? And I had my water bottle and it was full of rum. <laughs> but there was a reason for that. It wasn't because I wanted to be drunk, yeah. because I would give a, a drink to anybody in my platoon who needed it, you know. It was, it was, it was definitely medicine. And, but I had no water. And I thought, Christ, what am I going to do? And I unscrewed the top, handed it over to him. He couldn't hold it. So I had to take both hands and turn it over and hold it up. He opened his mouth. And drank about half of it. Neat rum. And it was 140 proof. You know, the, this, this stuff was dynamite, dynamite. <laughs> what did he do? He came to life for perhaps 30 seconds. He, <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny in a sense, but it is funny, tragic. Mm -hmm. He came to life long enough to say, Don Kishin. <laughs> and then he died. Died. How old were you? Hmm? How old were you? I guess I would be. Sorry, you've been thinking about it because it upsets me. Uh, I was about 21, I guess. I mean, it makes you the man you are, doesn't it, going through that? Well, it helped to disillusion me. It helped, it helped me to understand that if I wanted to go on living in the world, the real world, I had to learn to understand who and what I was and who and what my people were, the human people. And it, uh, it was the beginning of this long process of stripping off the illusions that we had so carefully built over the centuries. Historians, academics, writers, poets, ordinary people, these illusions about our worth and worthiness and showing us as we are, naked and bony. Interesting, you know, because those words that you wrote reached an audience. Well, I first read about it in school. Did it have any effect on you? Yeah, it was kind of scary, actually. The first time you read Never Cry Wolf, we joked right. off the top that I read it when I was 36, but no, I read it when I was a young man. And what it did was show, um, it actually, no, here's what it showed to me. You, we're this big mm -hmm. on the planet, and that go up in the north, young man, go ahead and watch, watch the world eat you. Mm -hmm. That you just can't go and live amongst the wolves. Things go wrong. And, um, but, but it found an audience. Were you surprised that that found an audience? But you know, there were people who, who knew how to live amongst and with the wolves. The Inuit. Yeah. And they were part and parcel of that great family, much greater family than the human family, which is the one that's going to continue and win the war. The Inuit are gone themselves, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you had that inclination, did you? That, you, you? that there might be something wrong with just being a human? Well, it was either that, or the, heavy, either that or the heavy metal I was listening to. Oh, my yeah. God. Like, what a choice. What a choice. Farley, um, I've heard you say, and I don't necessarily believe you, but I don't know um, that this is your last book. Every book has been my last book. Forty times I've written my last book. <laughs> yeah. We're doing this thing called One Million Acts of Green, sir, um, and, uh, and you've been talking about the, the, the environment for a long time. Uh -huh. You know, in your books, uh, what will your act of green be? You must have an act of green aside it, from... It's a combined book. act. My, myself and my wife, who yeah. is present tonight, keeping an eye on me. Claire's around And she badly needs to... <laughs> Where is that beautiful woman? There she is. She's up back. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, we uh, own, between us, about 200 acres of land 
in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, uh, on the coast. Beautiful piece of countryside, unspoiled, undamaged, forested, beaches, mm -hmm. the works. We've, we're in the process of giving this, transferring it to the Nova Scotia Nature Trust. And the way you do this, the reason you do this, you give it to them. The reason you do it is that there are new laws in place in most provinces in Canada which guarantee perpetual protection to properties that are given to nature trusts. Mm -hmm. It means they can, as close as you can ever be sure about anything, it means that the, the lands will be protected in perpetuity. So this is what we have done. And uh, I think it's important because it's something that anybody who owns land anywhere can do. Anybody, any, any, anybody who has control of land can do it. Even the developers, God rot their souls, could do it <laughs> if they wanted to. It's possibly the only way open to the majority of human beings who have access to land As a hell to, to, to make some, some amends for what we've done. That is a hell of an act of green. Yeah. All right, one million acts of green. Farley Moore's got a new book. It is called Otherwise. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Good to be here. Farley Moore, everybody. All right, when we come back, one final look at the U.S. election campaign, the good, the bad, and the hugly. That was a treat, man.